One thing about me is I'll always know how to get a really, really gorgeous house within the price range that I want and in the coolest of locations. And today I'm going to share not only my process, but I'm going to answer your questions on how I land gorgeous houses every single time. Since I started adulting, I have moved so many different times. And at first when I started, I didn't really put that much thought into the process. I was just like, hey, I want a house this big, and then I would just like probably walk down the road and be like, ah, there's an empty house here. I take it. But over the years, I have really, really refined my system and my process when I'm house hunting. And in this video, I'm going to break down my thought process, what to look out for when you're house hunting. And I've broken the video into chapters over here. So in case you want to just jump straight to what concerns you the most, we have the chapters over here. Before I even get into the questions themselves, the first thing that I do that is the most important thing the moment you make that decision first thing you have to do is you have to write down what you want let me tell you it is a game changer because what this does is that it helps you when you're looking at spaces it helps you know exactly how far off the house is from what you really want and this comes down to so many different levels so the first one is location where do i want this house to be what are the locations that I'm willing to venture into and what locations are a complete no-no? You have to have a list because you might go find a really, really gorgeous house, but the location is like completely off the radar. It is, and you're not willing to compromise on location. So you also have to know the second thing. What are the things you're willing to compromise on and what are the things you're not willing to compromise on? Must the house have wooden floors or are you okay with tiles if the house fits the bill and everything else? Do you want to have like a lot of kitchen storage or an extra room? Does it have to have a servant's quarter? Do you want to have two parking lots or one? Like literally write down everything. And when I say write down everything, you can even write, I want it to have huge windows with a balcony. I don't want to use a padlock to lock my door. I want it to have a lock on the door. Like write down anything that you think might be small, include it because that's how you use, those are the things you'll be ticking off when you're looking at houses. What is your budget? Again, how far are you willing to go? Because you can find a really, really, really gorgeous house that is twice the amount of money that you're budgeting for. Are you willing to pay twice as much? When it comes to budget, the thing I, I've, I've learned over the years when it comes to a budget is you can literally find a house for any amount of money. If you want a house for 5,000 bob, it exists. If you want a house for 500,000 bob, it exists. So the question is not really, will I get a house for 50,000 shillings? Is, is this house worth 50,000 shillings? Does it meet the criteria that I think a 50,000 bob house should meet? Now when you have that, when you have your blueprints, you have your list, you, have a, a, you, you are ready to go. Now you can start house hunting. Now let's get into the things to pay attention to when you're house hunting and how to go about it. What is your best tool for finding a house? Is it a website, an app, word of mouth, or asking around? So for me, there's a time where I used to be okay checking the platforms online. However, in recent years, the, these platforms have been filled up by coins. Like, and it's so hard to distinguish between a genuine a genuine person who has posted a house there versus someone who's just a, a con man. Then the other thing that never used to make sense to me about this thing was how someone wants to charge you like a thousand bob as and then they'll go show you the most randomest houses. Cause I'm like, if I've already told you what I'm looking for, why are you taking me to a random dungeon? Why, why are we in a dungeon? I told you I want um, good lighting, big windows. And then here we are. This is a closet, as in make it make sense. So there's a time where I used to use agents and it wasn't like at people I know or whatever. I would honestly just go online, make calls. Now, when it comes to making these calls, if you do find yourself looking online, one of the things is people steal photos a lot. So sometimes that house genuinely does exist. However, the person or this con artist will take those photos and then give you a very, very good deal. So when you see that the, the deal is too, it's, it's too good to be true, 
I think you can just, like sometimes your intuition will tell you. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. It probably is. Because why is someone giving you a five bedroom house in Westlands for 50k? Like surely. Make it make sense. So it got to a point where there's other ones where you can say, okay, this is reasonably priced, but then you call these people and they start playing games. The moment you make that call and someone goes like, oh, I'm not at the house right now. So do you let me send you or let me give you someone's number? Don't even bother. Don't even, those are cons. Because what they do is they'll be like, oh, I'm not there right now. I'm the agent. Let me see you forward you to the landlord or whoever. And then immediately that other person calls you. They start telling you, yeah, there's even someone here right now who's just about to pay for the house. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The moment they say that, just say, okay, Sala, thanks. And hang up. Because what they usually do in such a situation is they want to trap you into sending them money. That's the con. The con is... You will be like, oh my god, this house is so gorgeous. And then they'll be like, there's even someone who has said, Sidrini, but whoever puts in the deposit first is the one who's going to get the house. Just be like, it's okay, cool, thank you, thank you. Let me tell you, that's the way, one way to really, really save yourself from having to make, to jump into a deal. Because never, ever, 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 listen to me, never, ever pay for a house you've not seen. Never, ever, 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 never, okay? I don't care how many photos they send you. I don't care. Just say, okay, cool, cool, cool. They look so nice, but I'd like to see it in person. Because photos lie. Even in spaces, photos lie. I feel like you have to walk into a space. One, you need to feel the energy, okay? Someone can say, this house is just close to the road. But which road? So never, ever, ever, ever pay for a house that you have not seen. So when it comes to agents, I personally... Do not trust them. I don't trust agents. They're there to make a quick buck. For me, I think if someone's charging you a thousand bob, it should be they charge you that one thousand bob until the day you find your house. It doesn't matter how long it's gonna take until the day you find your house. But they don't do that. So I personally do not trust agents. I don't use agents. What do I do? All the spaces that I've ended up in have been places I've visited, I've visited before. So the first thing is, how do you find yourself in spaces? Visit friends. If your friend lives. Somewhere and you're like, you know, you want to start, you want to start looking for a house. Visit people. Visit people whose houses you like and then look at the areas. So if I visit a friend and I'm like, oh, this, this area looks nice. What, how did I discover Liburu as a potential space for me to live in? I went to see a friend. I had gone to visit a friend. We had gone to see them. And the right there, I was like, holy shit, I love this space. I love the area. And then we get to the house and I'm like, oh, the views are amazing. And that's how I discovered the area. So for me, it starts with visiting friends. Also, the other point of visiting a friend is like, whenever I know I'm moving into an area, because for me, let's say like now it's the whole remote away from Nairobi type situations. You want to also be in a space where there's another person in the area that you know should anything happen to you there's someone you can call and be like hey i'm feeling unwell and i'm in the hospital or hi i slipped and fell and this happened or hi especially as someone who lives by themselves you want to also know that there's someone close by or have an area in mind a location in mind where you know someone else okay there's that um so the first thing is the walking around thing. So after you visited, now you can ask your friend to ask around, um, ask people in the area, and then choose a random day and come walk around. Any place that you've had, there's a house, walk. For me, I'm a big believer in walking around. Walk around weekends, walk around um, on whatever, what are they called, weekdays. Because in walking around, you also see the things in the area. So take a full day, go walk. So, because now you've already cemented down the area, you're like, I know this is the space, I know the location, go take a walk. There's so many, like, even for instance, say Kikuyu, Kikuyu is so large. There's so many different parts of Kikuyu, right? So, ask around, and it starts with the friend, and the friend can also ask other people who've lived in the area. I was lucky enough that my friend has lived in Kikuyu um, since she was very young, so she knows a lot of different areas, which so is like, oh... Go check this area. So even when I say, oh, I, I, I saw a house. I was told this a potential house in this space. Do that. My friend did link me with um, an agent who operates within the area. So this guy, they're in a group. 
So the guy said, hey, my friend is looking for a house. Can you ask in your group if there's anyone? And then there's also groups. Like on Facebook, there's groups on WhatsApp, if you can gain access to them, that also have people in different areas. And like my friend went and posted in the group and said, hey, I'm looking for a house. It goes back to our list. So I'm looking for a house that is at least on the minimum two bedrooms. So two to three bedrooms. This is our budget range. Because remember with the budget, if you can get a house for however amount okay so we put your bud budget and the thing is put the lower end of the budget and then don't tell them how much you're willing to stretch to but you you know how much you're willing to stretch to so if say for instance i want a house that i don't want for instance say i don't want to pay more than twenty five thousand shillings a month say you are looking for a house that's 20k so you at the back of your mind you know you're willing to do anywhere between 20 and 25 don't tell them that because then what they'll do is if you tell them 25, they'll start showing you houses between 25 and 30. And sometimes they'll show you mostly houses between 30 and 35. So that's something that I've noticed with agents. Because also the other thing is <clears throat> these guys get, they get a commission when they take you to a house, right? So the more expensive the house is, the higher the commission they get. The agent that I got was also asked for, I'll give you the 1,000 bob, but you are working with me until I find a house. It wasn't those ones for Atinini. And also at one point, he did try to rush me. And I was like, no, Mimi, I have a process. You're not going to rush my process. My process is even if I see the house and I say, oh, I like it, I'm going to go sleep on it. I am going to go home and sleep on it. And I'm going to come back and look at the house one other time before I say, okay, maybe yes. And even in that time, I was like, and you can still be on the lookout because I was like, okay, this is a contender because it's like a house that he showed me. And I was like, no, but this is outside the budget range that I told you. And it was outside the range by 10 Gs, by 10K. And I was like, no. One of the questions that I got is like, how do you get nice houses that are budget friendly, so serene and own compound or say shared compound because like this one is a shared compound. How do you do that is you have this there are certain things that come with a compromise you want it to be affordable but you still want all the packs of compound you want all the packs of um a garden you want the packs of you know serenity there's a compromise in that and the compromise comes with distance can you find a house that has a compound, a huge parking, a garden, and in a serene environment somewhere in Nairobi? Yes. But the compromise in that is price. The price for that will be way higher. Of course, the price for the house will be way higher in Nairobi than it would be outside of Nairobi. So you have to be willing to step outside that. If you are looking for affordability with all the packs, then you have to look outside the city. You have to be willing because the compromise is in the distance. That's that's what I usually tell people. Because whenever someone is like, oh, this is far. I'm like, yeah, that's that's what I get. To get this, to get the kind of space, to get the environment that I'm in, the compromise for me is in the distance. And now when it comes to also distance, you have to consider things like, do you leave the house every single day? I don't. So for me, I don't care. Most of the times, I leave the house once a week. There's times I can go even three weeks without leaving the house. For someone who has to be in the office every single day at 6 a.m., you might have to pay attention to what the distance means. Because um, then you don't want to have to leave the house at 3 a.m. to make it to the office at 6 a.m. So distance also matters. So you have to also look at your situation and how the distance comes into play. The other thing is when you're looking at distance is accessibility is it easy for you to access the space if you're leaving the house every single day and you have to come back every single evening how does this affect in in terms of your accessibility how long do you have to be on the road to get to the house those are the things to look at and the best people to help you with these things is like when you go walking around ask boda boda guys ask the caretakers if they're there like for me i was told oh in the morning if you're leaving early in the morning I don't have to get into Kikuyu town to get a super metro. They come to the bypass, right? I don't have to go into Kikuyu town. So who do you ask? You ask the people around. You can ask, like when we came to see this house, when we were leaving, 
we gave um, the someone who was walking and we stopped and gave them a lift we're like hey are you going to Kikuyu? and they said yes we're like oh we can give you a lift and then we asked them questions <laughs> through the ride so we're like ah so how long have you lived around here um are you from here or like are you renting and they, they told us they were a teacher there's a school close by and they're like oh i'm a teacher at this school and i live at the school we're like oh that's interesting so we started asking questions so how how safe is this place because it was a woman Listen, I will trust a woman telling me something about safety than a man. I'm not saying that men don't know about safety. It's because as a woman, I know there's extra precautions that are taken for being a woman when it comes to safety. So I will trust a woman. If a woman tells me a place is safe, it's easier for me to trust them because that means they've taken all those two small, small things into consideration that men would never have to think about. So that means gauging by those things that yes, we're good okay so i asked her questions and we're like yeah we just come to see a house and i was curious and i was like oh cool so how many schools are around here um how loud does the church get because it's like a church it's like how loud does it get and then we're asking okay so about to see who um has there been like security issues are there robberies um how is it around the holidays because also sometimes you know during ho holidays there's usually like insecurity whew, fluctuations and such so asking those questions the thing is there's questions you'll ask so there's certain questions to ask like the owners right the landlords the landladies uh, whoever runs the property questions about water uh, questions about like security you can ask them but also ask other people in the area because then they can tell you my place is secured. I have fences, I have CCTV, I have a gate man, I have patrol people at night. Ask them those questions. Ask them about water. Let me tell you, I know one of the questions that, that popped up a lot was, is there water? Is there water? So for me, my question about water is, anyone you ask, is there water? They'll say yes. Ask the source. Always ask for the source. Because someone will say yes, and then they won't tell you, yeah, but it's Kanjo water and it comes once a week. So you need to have extra tanks. So you need to have this. So ask. Ask the water as you're asking for like pricing of the water, for instance. So for me, I asked, okay, cool. So, um, you know, what's, what's the water source? Is it like, you know, Kiambu County water situation? Or like, you know, and then I was told, no, no, we have our own borehole. So we have our water that pumps, you know, throughout. So we have water throughout. The other thing is if there's like, someone else like for instance this this house has there's another house and then there's other houses pay attention and see if they have like mitungis outside and drums and stuff because that communicates something if someone needs the if someone feels the need to have a bunch of mitungis stacked up trust you me there's a water problem if someone has a bunch of storage for water that immediately indicates there's a water problem check water pressure as well <laughs> Always flush the toilets <laughs> and start the taps. Water pressure is so important. Yo, let me tell you water pressure. If you don't want to be there with a bucket every day, eh? after you, you've done a number two, check the water pressure. That is just a side note, okay? <laughs> that is a side note. So ask the people about their water source and how much they charge for the water. And then ask things like, okay, cool. So does, does that mean that at times there's no water? Like, you know, does, does your well run dry? You have to ask these things and chances are if someone has their own personal borehole that would never happen also you can pay attention to how people use water are people liberal with it or you know like sometimes uh you can be somewhere alafu you see that water is it's not being poured it's being put somewhere in a container that's where you know hi yo there's a problem here so ask, ask as many questions as you can. If you see like a cleaning lady, a house manager there, ask them. Ask, it's like, oh, by the way, imagine how na shida. It's not, sometimes it's always just a simple question. It's like, by the way, hapa, kuna kwanga na hii na hii. For me, I will talk to as many people as possible. Then, when you're doing a second checkup, come on your own. You don't, have, don't come with the, if, even if it's an agent who brought you, Whatever, come on your own. Okay, you can come with a friend, come with another person. You want to show them the space and be like, oh, this is the place I found. Because you, you might be wearing your, they're called rose-colored glasses. Bring another person so they can be like, I, okay, me, I don't know what you're seeing in this house. Although sometimes the thing that I have learned about myself, my problem is I see potential. <laughs> 
I see, but let me tell you, in houses and in people, <laughs> don't fall for the potential. But also it comes down to, you know, the deal that you're getting. There's certain things that you might not clock because you've fallen in love with like one piece of the house. Say maybe for instance, uh, this house, it's absolutely stunning on the outside, right? It has its faults on the inside, like, you know, brown paint. Um, and someone who's like very attached to the brown paint for some random reason. But it's absolutely stunning on the outside, right? Okay, even on the inside, yes. So you might fall in love. For instance, let's give an instance where the outside looks absolutely stunning. But you come in and say one of the bedrooms can't even fit a 4 by 6 bed. Like you uh, huh <laughs> you know like so someone else might call that out and be like i uh i feel like this this rooms are so tiny and they can call that out and then you can decide okay does this mean that we have to renegotiate the rent or what exactly does this mean for me right so when you come the second time bring another person someone who will not fall in love with me like one thing i learned my mother is not the best uh for, to bring for certain things because I think our taste levels are different. Not taste levels, our willingness to, our willingness to spend is different. That's one. <laughs> and also I think my sister, my sister, yes, because my sister has seen spaces I've been in before. So she can easily clock something and be like, I don't think so. My friends, my friends definitely would be the best. I think friends are probably the bestest because they might have, you guys might have similar likes and they might clock things that you don't clock, right? So I'd say bring a friend. Bring a friend. Tell your mother after you've already secured the house, but bring a friend, okay? <laughs> because you know that thing where sometimes people even like lie to their moms about how much they're paying for a space because you immediately know your mother will be like, why are you paying so much? Why are you Yes, so maybe a friend. Bring a friend and then, you know, they can help you assess the house. And then only after you've made that choice. Don't let people pressure you. Me, let me tell you. Even with this house, when I came the second time, I was told, yeah, there's even someone who had come surgery yesterday and they said they're coming today at four. And I was like, it's okay. It is absolutely okay because people will try to pressure. Because you see them, they're also in business. They want someone in the house because... Well, the moment there's someone in the house, they're making money. When the house is empty, they're not making money. So they're not looking out for you and your needs. They're looking out for their needs. So you always have to have that at the back of your mind. The agent is looking out for their need because if you take the house, they get a commission. The landlady is looking out for themselves because if you take the house, they get a, a stable income, uh, you know, money coming in every month. And in that moment, they get money for deposits and all these things they bring in, da da da, da right? All the things they ask for they ask for before you move into the house so everyone is looking out for themselves so make sure you're also looking out for yourself what are your needs and what's important for you if if you're feeling pressured imagine don't make the decision at that moment for me i tell myself if it's mine it's mine if it's mine ah and that's imagine that's what i mean i told them and they're like yeah this is someone they said they're coming up and i said that's okay if this space is mine it's mine it's gonna wait for me you know and then I went and then I came back and I said, okay, cool. I've, I've made my decision um, and I'll take the house. And I was like, cool. So how do we go about this? What are the things? And then we do a whole walkthrough and we say, you see, this, this is chipped. This is cracked. This is this. This is that. And I would like to paint the house, you know? So when it comes to such situations, it's like, don't let anyone pressure you. Do not allow the pressure to be like, Oh my God, so do there's five other people. It's fine. Even if there's 10 people, imagine it's okay. If it's yours, it's yours. And sometimes I know that those people don't exist. Those people are not there. It is a way to, they're trying to get you to make that decision faster because it's good for them. The sooner you make the decision, the better for them. So, do that. And then the other thing is do walk, walk arounds. Walk around over the weekend and over the weekday. Pay attention to the things that are around. Is there a school? Is there a church? Um, if there's a school and there's a church, make sure you come during the weekday to, to find out how loud does it get. Because schools can get loud. Schools can, kids, kids can get loud. Especially come, make sure you, 
you're coming around break time you know that's when they're on break or lunch time whenever the kids are outside because when the kids are in class it's gonna be very quiet in places like this in ushago places sound also carries because we don't have there's no interruption with the matatus it's like there's no let me call it artificial noise you don't have a lot of artificial noise you don't have the matatus blaring with their music passing uh boda bodas every 12 seconds no in such a place when there's noise you really hear it because when well, it's silent it's very silent so when it's loud it's very very loud like so for me that matters because i create content i i record in this house so those things you know pay attention to them when you're walking around your house now you've you found this house and you're like okay i like it single girl tips those questions ask them ask anyone and everyone you can ask ask questions about like um usiku do people get robbed can people walk and even if it's like getting robbed um if there's like cases of insecurity ask because there's i think with every area there's always cases of like small small robberies so it's like will people randomly walk into the compound when people are not there um when you're walking around the areas ask the mamadukas uh the kibanda people even ask because sometimes there's places where there's one time i went to a kibanda at six and they had fungad and i was like what do you mean i was told yeah i want a funganga mapema and i was like and at first i was like is, does this mean there's an insecurity issue at first i was like are they scared to operate at night but then also at the same time i realized that maybe the issue was they have to go home and cook for their kids and stuff like that because there was another shop there and that one was open until like about 8 p.m so i think the key elements when it comes to like the look and the feel of the house that comes from you it's a preference thing are you are you okay with a house that doesn't have a pantry or must it have a pantry okay um okay i guess we can go to Oh yeah, so someone asked, what flaws should you avoid and why? Again, it, it's a preference thing. Um, are you willing to live with the tile floors that have patterns or not? It's a preference thing. It's not a, there's no one size fits all. It comes down to the things you like and the things you don't like. What do you like in a house? What you do you not like? I, it's like, there's someone can be like, Mimi, I don't care. The floors have to be wooden. So just the, the moment you see tiles, say no, I'm done. I want wooden floors. And even with wooden floors, what kind do you want? Because there's the laminate type, there's, you know. So there's certain things where also, it's like if the house is really good, is there something you can do if the issue is just say the tile? Is there something you can do that helps that? Do you want to put carpets over it? Do you want to have rugs? Do you want to cover the entire floor and put like those laminate um, wooden whatever? It, it comes down to a preference thing. So when it comes to that, I would say, what are you not willing to live with i think that would be the best question and then now the question how can one negotiate the rent this is a tricky one because if you are dealing with the owner of the house it might be a bit easier if you are dealing with um an intermediate body it might be a lot harder and also i think with negotiations that um the time we experienced COVID, it was easier for people to negotiate and say, hey, this and this. But I think with those things, you can just, if you have access to them, talk to them and say, hey, I really like this house. But I feel because there's a bit of work that needs to be done here, can we lower the price a little bit because this house has been neglected or because your walls are cracking or because there's all these other expenses, da, 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 da. Again, comes down to a conversation. Also, you can ask. Some of these people, like when they put the price, they don't expect you to ask. You can ask, you can, like, you know, the same way you go to toy market and ask. If this blouse, you're, I know you're saying it is 300 bob, but can I get it for 250? Because some, some of the people might be desperate enough where they're like, hey, this house has been empty for so long. So instead of 100% of zero, I'd rather get, uh, you know, 90% of 100k. You know, you, you, you get it. So it depends. That one, it's like you just talk to them and see <laughs> and see uh, if they're willing to have that conversation with you or not. I think that comes down to conversation. Another question that I was asked, how do you acclimate to living out of town? 
you have to be comfortable with it so again it comes down to the kind of person you are are you someone who is um you know you want to be friends with everyone or not for me i'm not like i'm i am here to leave i'm not i'm not trying to be uh the neighborhood uh you know dinner host every two weeks no I'm like, I can be cordial with people. I'll say hi to you. I want to know the people who I live around, um, you know, who are they? I don't need to know what you do. No, we are not. We're not sitting down and be like, so tell me, how come I don't see it? You know, we're not doing that. Um, so it's like in acclimation for me, it's not hard. I am a homebody. I love, love, love being in my space. I love being at home. And what do I do is I also like to know where I am. So I'll go for walks um, just to know the area, go to the shops, talk to the, you know, the shop lady. We don't even talk about like things like that. Like I know her name. I have her number. Sometimes I'll call her and ask her, hey, kuna mena leo? Because I don't want to walk all the way to the shop and then they don't have what I want. Um, you know, get yourself a Buddha guy. Get one or two people you can trust that way. If one is unavailable, you know, you have a, a backup. Um... Also knowing the easiest, I think in terms of acclimation, also it's like knowing the easiest path to go to places. So is it easier for me to, like me, I'll walk places just to gauge how far or how long it would take me to get from one point to another. Like, are there many routes going to the same place, you know? So like walking around, just familiarizing yourself with the space, you know, that helps um, a lot. But for me personally, Again, I think it also goes down to like your personal uh, choices and stuff. On a personal note, I am not trying to be friends with everyone. I actually avoid trying to be friends with everyone. I'm like, we can be tunonananga, but you don't know much about me and I don't know shit about you and I don't want to. Like, I can know your name, say hi to you, um, you know have generic conversations whenever we bump into each other. Is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else I've left out. This was, I was answering questions that I had asked people on Instagram and I did categorize them into the different, um, into the different chapters, not characters, into different chapters because most of them are very similar. So I did group them. Um, if there are any questions that you feel I've left out, please leave, leave them below and I'll, I'll respond as, as, you know, where I can, uh, if I can, for instance. There's someone who asked a question, it's like, would you be willing to help someone find a house at a fee? The answer to that is no. Like, that is not, it's not a business or a space that I want to be in. That's, it's just not for me. I'm not doing the walking, walking around, looking for houses. That's, it's just not, it's not for me. But you can ask people if they are in, in groups where there's agents who are trustworthy or if people know agents who are trustworthy and then they can connect you with those people. Have your friends help you. Um, it takes a village to find a good house. And also... One thing that I actually think I forgot to mention, it takes time. Finding a good house is not, like, you can be lucky in one or two occasions where you go and find a house that ticks all your boxes, but it does take time. It takes effort, it takes time. So plan yourself. If you're like, oh, I want to move, give yourself time. Because also when you give yourself time, you are able to plan ahead. You know, it's easier for you to plan ahead when you know you have time versus when it's like, let's go. That one might be a bit tricky. So, yes. Thank you very much for, you know, watching this video. I hope I answered all the questions that you had. And I hope my tips are going to help you in your next house hunting career situationship. <laughs> situationship. Remember to follow me on social media because that's where we have this Q&A questions. In case you have a question that you want to be, uh, you know, answered next time. I'm on Instagram. And also check out the podcast. We are back with new episodes. Please, that's just doing live here on YouTube or just doing live the podcast on all your or whatever you get your podcast. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>